future respiratory therapist, hey, in this video, you know what? I'm just going to break it all down for you. It all comes down to essentially two things, and we're going to talk about it in this video. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, I'm going to tell you what it all comes down to, and the really the main reason I'm talking about this is because there's a lot of new students sending me messages going, hey, I got into a program and I'm ready to kind of get ahead. And what do I study now? And I usually typically tell them, study pulmonary anatomy, look at your blood flow through the heart, and then start looking at obstructive versus restrictive diseases. Now, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Before I do so, let's talk about the Respiratory Coach Academy. I've got resources available to aid you on your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. The TMC Bootcamp, the CSE Bootcamp, the Formulas Course, the Pharmacology Course, and the ABG Interpretation Course, and then, of course, my free resources, cheat sheets right here for you, absolutely at no cost. Uh, check that out. Look in the video description below for the link so that you can check it out uh, and let me know what you think. Now, I told you, it all comes down to this. Restrictive versus obstructive. Now, what does that mean, though? Like, it doesn't really, it doesn't really give me anything of substance, right? So let's just talk about this for just a second, because I'm about to show you how everything in respiratory therapy that you do is going to fall in one of these two boxes. Dang near everything you do, and if you can understand this, it's going to help you realize how I treat my patients better, and what I need to be focusing on to aid my patients during their time of respiratory distress. So, restrictive versus obstructive. What does that mean? Well, it means this. Restrictive lung diseases, they have a hard time getting air in. Obstructive lung diseases, see, they have a hard time getting air out. Two different things. So you say to yourself, so... Why? Why does that matter, right? Well, here's what it comes down to. Your restrictive lung diseases are diseases that are going to impact and affect the functional units, being the alveoli. Our obstructive lung diseases are going to affect our airways, and that's really, really comes all, all comes down to. So what are we talking about here? When we talk about restrictive diseases affecting the alveoli, we're talking about things like pneumonia, ARDS, pulmonary fibrosis, pneumothorax, pleural effusion, atelectasis, hemo hemothorax. Okay, I'm tracking with you. Oh, okay. So things that actually impact the alveolar units. Exactly. You see, when we talk about obstructive pulmonary dis disorders, we're talking about airway disorders. And what does that cause? See, now we're talking about excessive mucus in the airways. We're talking about smooth muscle constriction, things like asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis. See, that falls over here. And you may be saying to yourself, well, okay, I'm tracking, but keep going. So let's keep going. You see, restrictive lung diseases affect the alveolar units, and this is going to cause a decrease in our pulmonary compliance, our static compliance, the integrity of the alveolar units. But when we get over here to obstructive, we see that we're talking about the airways, and this is going to increase resistance, which brings us to the next point, and that is this right here. You see, a decrease in compliance is going to affect the inspiratory side of the breath. They can't get air in. But when we look at obstructive and we're talking about resistance problems, you see the problem now lies on expiration. So, okay, I'm tracking Joe, but, but again, why? why? Why is it all come back to this? Because everything you do will be taking you into one of these boxes. Am I dealing with a restrictive disease? Am I finding on my physical assessment things like hyporesonance and increased tactile fermentus? Am I hearing crackles from the alveolar units? 
That's all here. Am I mechanically ventilating a patient with pulmonary fibrosis? And why can I use really small tidal volumes and really high respiratory rates, but I can't use high rates over here? Oh, that's right, because they have a decrease in compliance, which means they don't want to take the volume and then they get rid of it really fast because of that decreased compliance. That's all over here. But what about when I have that patient on my physical assessment where I see a barrel chest and purse lip breathing and, 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 and maybe digital clubbing? You have a decreased tactile firmitus with hyper resonant percussion note because of the excessive air trapping. Now you say, well, okay, so excessive air trapping. Yeah, that's because they can't get air out. This is why when you take your TMC exam, you're going to have a patient who is air trapping and that patient is likely going to be diagnosed with either COPD or asthma. It's that simple because those diseases fall in this box. See what I'm saying? Well, what about when the pressure starts to rise during mechanical ventilation and my plateau pressure starts to go up? Oh, because you have a decrease in compliance? <laughs> because your patient has developed a pneumonia, which is a restrictive disorder, and you want to increase the PEEP and maybe lengthen the eye time because we need more time for gas exchange? We're playing in this box. See what I'm saying? It all comes down to these two things. Your understanding of respiratory therapy will massively improve and be enhanced if you can understand that restrictive that restrictive diseases affect the alveoli, they decrease compliance, and the problem lies on inspiration. Obstructive patients have a problem with their airways increasing resistance and they need help getting air out. This is gonna make PFTs make sense. This is gonna make mechanical ventilation make sense. This is gonna make pharmacology make sense. These concepts right here, are gonna make it all make sense, I promise you. So dive into these concepts, enjoy it. Enjoy learning, enjoy the journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. Now, before I leave you, I'm Respiratory Coach. Thank you for being here. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the like button, uh, leave me a comment. Come follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach and LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. If you're a student right now and you do not have a LinkedIn account, make one today and start connecting with respiratory professionals all over this country to take you wherever you want to go in your journey. If you have any questions for me, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. And remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.